Hello and welcome everybody to our Friday night show, the ASEA 5, where we welcome you every week to hear about these amazing technologies and these incredible molecules called redox signaling molecules and what they can do for your health. We, although we have a lot of medical professionals here, it's not a medical product or a medical company. We're not here to diagnose, treat, or cure anything. But what we do is teach you and share with you information so that you can empower your body to do what it does best, which is to heal itself. So we're here to help people have optimal health and maybe just share some wisdom, some information so that you can understand it a little bit better. We have our regulars, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm Dr. Maureen Hayes from Galveston, Texas. My background is I'm an anesthesiologist and pain specialist, but I've been a full-time redox educator for the last eight and a half years. I'm joined by Ann and Jim Glenn from San Antonio. Jim is Hello. our money man and his beautiful wife, Ann, is our personal trainer and nutritionist. And then, of course, we have Dr. Lee Osler, dentist from Washington State, author of the, has to be a best-selling book by now, Redox Matters, that we all love. Yay. Thank you. And we're joined tonight by a, a very special guest, Dr. Ray Dixon, who is from Australia, practices now in Phuket, Thailand, and has come all the way by Zoom from Thailand to, to be with us today. He has a very interesting background. Um, it, it, you just love to get degrees, don't you, <laughs> Dr. Ray? You're, a, you're an osteopath, a chiropractor, a naturopath. There's probably room for a few more things, but amazing. I'm going to let, since Lee knows you best of all, I'm going to let him say a few words for you, you know, about you. And then I would love for you to take us on the journey of that education and how you came to learn about Redox and what it means for you. So Lee, if you would. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, Dr. Ray has become a, uh, another brother from another mother for me right. as we've, uh, as we have uh, worked on this redox uh, journey here for the last year or two. And it was such a pleasure to meet him and to get his input into the Redox Matters book as I was writing it. He was a, he was a good sounding board. And um, I, I, I've coined a term here that's called Ray-isms. And oh, he is, yeah. Dr. Ray is just full of these isms that he'll, he's gonna share some of them tonight or we're gonna ask him about because he has the science down cold. And so uh, I, I'm gonna be pleased to have him <laughs> uh, become famous for his rayisms uh, as he describes what cellular health is and how ASEA Redox can help us. Dr. Ray, welcome to the ASEA 5. Give us your background Yay. and maybe uh, uh, help us understand how it was you first became introduced to this and why it matters to you. Oh, absolutely. Thank, thank you, everyone, for, um, for the invite to be here. It's my great pleasure. I say on all my calls now that uh, this product brought me out of retirement. I'll explain why shortly. And obviously, I'm, I, I feel privileged, actually, to, to be able to, uh, to help the legacy heard of and share this amazing product around the world. Okay, look, my background, I, my asthma was cured when I was 18 by a naturopath. That was way back in 1973. I actually had no idea what a naturopath mm -hmm. was. I'd read about yoga, decided I would go and do some yoga, pranayam, breathing exercises. The lady uh, suggested, her name was Joyce, that I see her husband. Um, she was a great yoga teacher. She suggested I see her husband, who was a naturopath and chiropractor, because she said he would cure my asthma. And I was a bit surprised I said well what is a chiropractor and a naturopath I had no idea when I was 18 and she explained natural healing medicine diet minerals herbs nutrition etc so I said fine because I was doing great with the yoga so sure enough I'm here to tell you that at the age of 65 66 next month I have never had asthma since uh, that was an astounding time in my life because it kind of blew me away it was, and it was all just almost like it was planned. It was kind of like a synchronicity that was happening. It just was amazing. The very next year um, in 74, I entered the Southern School of Natural Therapies in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. It's still there to this day. Graduated as an osteopath, then a year later as a naturopath. And they were fairly political times with the, the registration of chiropractors and osteopaths in Australia. 
And it just became evident to me it was going to be problematic to be registered as an osteopath. There was a bit of a turf war between colleges and recognition. So I went on and did chiropractic at what's now called RMIT University in Melbourne. It, it had a different name then and graduated as a chiropractor in, uh, in 82. But I was practicing through those early years. I had the most extraordinary experience of being, I never had to build a practice. I worked with that gentleman and his wife for the next 40 plus years. He was busy. So as soon as I had a spare hour to see patients, I had patients. It was just a, an extraordinary journey. Um, so I never had to build a practice. I had an instant practice as I had an available hour. And then, of course, you're on the quest of the Holy Grail, as far as I'm concerned. You're always looking for something that is magical, that's a powerful self-healing product for the human body. I was very much fixated, as you can imagine, on the natural therapy journey. Um, we can talk about that if needs be regarding vitalistic medicine, as Dr. Lee calls it, the inner doctor within. That's all inherent to natural healing philosophy and, of course, fits perfectly with a sea redox. So I then work with hundreds of herbs, every supplement you can care to name. I had a, a dispensary. I never counted because I probably would have had a heart attack, but I'm guessing it probably had $150,000 worth of products in it. There were hundreds of homeopathic medicines. I studied homeopathy in my naturopathic studies as well. Um, and I used all of those along with my musculoskeletal skills um, to help whoever came my way as best I could. If we fast forward, um, probably after about 20 years of, you know, playing with reflexology and dry needling acupuncture and other things, I kind of reached a point where I didn't think there was a holy grail. I, I, I knew we had some great products and we helped a lot of people, but I kind of stopped looking after that first 20 plus years because I never found one. Um, and... Fast forward till probably six, seven years ago, um, Lorreen Bavart, who many of you perhaps know, a triple diamond of Australia. She was a good friend of mine. Uh, she'd been a, a patient and her family had for many years. In fact, the clinic sponsored her in her quest to the, the Karate World Championship, which she won five times. And, and she was a friend as well. I actually did karate also with Lorreen for some years with the same instructors. So she'd mentioned to me um, about a new product, uh, Renu 28, you know, uh, at that stage. I'm not sure if the drink was in Australia then, but it was certainly coming soon thereafter. And I kind of had a, a pleasant lunch and we touched base, but I really didn't pay really any attention. I, I kind of figured by that stage and, you know, practitioners have advantages, but they also have disadvantages. And then is you have a lot of baggage up here and you, you tend to, to think you know it all by the time you've done it for 40 years. <laughs> so I, I, I must confess I was probably a little guilty of that. And I had lunch and I went back to my clinic. I was very busy, of course. I had very little time freedom. Um, and then practiced for the next two years and, and didn't really pay any heed to it. And to Lorraine's credit, she didn't a push or, or, or pursue. I still saw occasionally to do some musculoskeletal work or whatever. And um, fast forward, uh, 2017 in July, I came to live in Phuket, Thailand. I decided I, I wanted to regain some of that time freedom that I'd never had all my life with appointment after appointment every day with patients. Um, and I found a lovely Thai lady. So I came here I extricated myself from the clinic. My partner by then had obviously long retired. He died at the age of 92 last year in April. That was George. And Joyce died literally one month before I came to live in Phuket, Thailand in uh, July of 2017. One year later, Lorraine came for a holiday. She came with her two daughters. She stayed right here in this, in this house. Well, she had a captive audience, of course, because two weeks Lorraine and the girls, we had a lot of fun, but uh, she also had me with a lot more time freedom. So she said, why don't you take a serious look at, at the redox now? So I did. And I kind of fluctuated between the, the healthy self testimonial site where they were just too good to be true, of course. Uh, we all suffer from that experience. And I'm going, 
really? <laughs> and then I would start to go down the rabbit hole, as, as Dr. Lee refers to it. Um, Dr. Gary Samuelson, atomic medical physicist, redox story, Nobel Prize, 98. All you guys know this and many on the call. And, I, and it was sort of building, the science credibility was building. Uh, in other words, I wasn't aware of it because I wasn't up with the latest research. And it should be said here, I feel, that most practitioners aren't. You know, they're called practitioners for a reason. They're practising. <laughs> and, and, and they're practising out of their past. They're really practising what they already know and what they've learned. Um, and unless something bangs you straight on the head, you really don't, you're not really at the forefront of medical science in research for most of us. Dr. Lee's an exception because he loves that, that, that territory. But I kind of just went about practising and unless somebody didn't come and really from the filtering down process of being introduced to therapeutic substances and, uh, and supplements, it's the same in the pharmacological drug model. You, you expect it to come down through practitioner suppliers, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that obviously didn't happen with redox. And, uh, but I started to see this, this interesting connection between valid potential science that was pretty profound from a natural healing perspective. Remember, that's my greatest love. And then I'm seeing these just amazing result testimonials. Uh, it literally, I say to my people now, I was looking at my failures. I mean, I was really looking at, you know, where your heart breaks a little because you weren't able to help that person as much as you would have liked. Uh, and, and we don't need to name all manner of conditions. It's pretty obvious what we're referring to. All manner of serious disease processes that I would, was able perhaps to, to help a little, but not a lot. And I'm seeing these astounding result stories around those conditions. So I, I, I basically made a decision and that was, look, if this is 50% true, not only do I need to know about it, as I said last time, Jim, from a self-interest point of view, uh, I want to be on it, <laughs> but it was also I need to know because uh, I will never stop healing. I also say once a healer, always a healer. So I'm a little bit like Maureen now. I've kind of, I do see a couple of patients a day. I, I, I literally limit to two to three. If I see four, I'm thinking, God, I'm getting too busy because I don't, I don't want to go back to that lifestyle. But I love uh, doing Zooms every day, uh, sharing a CA Redox. I'm just back from Nashville, did a tour over there with my group, giving lots of presentations, went to headquarters in Salt Lake City. The whole thing is like a dream for me. Uh, and uh, I'm just more than happy to be busy doing what I love. And from that perspective, of course, you don't call that work. Uh, this isn't work to me. This is fun uh, and exciting, quite frankly. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Well, that, that was fantastic. You know, I'd, I'd like to have you go back to uh, maybe answering some questions that I know that some of the listeners, uh, what the viewers might have, and that is, uh, what is Redox? When you, when you had this thing that captivated you, you talked about looking for this holy grail that you never came across. I'm, I'm assuming that you think that maybe we're closer to that now. But, but what is that? And, and one of the rayisms that I actually uh, stole from you and put in the book was that you know this is sitting at that interface between um, energy and matter, and maybe you could explain what is redox signaling and why does it matter? Absolutely. Um, remember, way back eighteen, my first connection was to yoga. Um, so one of my greatest uh, loves of my life also isn't just the hatha yoga, which most people think of at first. There are other dimensions in yoga, Lee, uh, um, Raj yoga, Nani yoga, and some of these deal with um, the whys and wherefores of life. And uh, so I'm kind of very philosophical in that sense, both, I mean, I've got a degree in Western philosophy, but uh, my yoga Eastern philosophy studies were more individual uh, from my yoga journey. And so I was very much aware of, of the, 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 the principles of humankind, physically speaking. 
and I was aware of this sort of step down process um, before you reach the physical, which of course is the material universe in which we live and the bodies in which we inhabit. Um, there is a lot of talk uh, and a lot of presenting in yoga philosophy on um, energy than physicality. So I was very much aware that there is that physical energetic, in, not just interconnection with the physical, the physical's predicated on it. It wouldn't exist without it. Now, of course, we're in the, the metaphysical realms of, you know, prana, life force, chi, um, whatever you want to call that, vital force, as it's called in homeopathy, um, which, of course, is yet to be physically, scientifically, completely proven. I believe there's a lot of evidence towards that. In fact, I believe redox signaling molecules is part of that. Uh, you know, that, that energy level step down into the physicality has got to step down somewhere. There has to be uh, uh, an eventual connection between the energetics and something chemical. And when you get to nano-sized redox signaling molecules, a kind of figure it's probably not going to get much smaller than that. <laughs> so, so that just was making perfect sense to me. And, of course, from that yoga philosophical perspective and alongside natural healing philosophy, then if you get that deep, you're actually going to come to the point where you interact with something that is universal to all cells in the human body. Uh, it's not like you would teach, Lee, where you're chemically intervening in an existing process downstream, whether that be a drug or a herb or an essential oil. It's you're up closer to that interface of the energetics, the spark plugs, as I know Maureen's mentioned before, uh, that provides the energy which is deeper and more profound than anything else. It doesn't mean that the others don't count. Of course, there's still 50 essential, up to 50 essential nutrients, trace minerals, minerals, vitamins, amino acids, carbs, whatever you like, fatty acids. But, but the energetics is going to be supreme. And, and I actually think this is it. Uh, it certainly is in our lives, all of our lives. I mean, for something to have been discovered that is literally at that interface, which we all know so profoundly affects every cell in the human body and allows those cells to heal themselves from damage, to become healthier, to repair. And where not repair, then, of course, we all know the immune system will, is, is designed to take out those sufficiently mutated damaged cells so that we don't develop uh, a replication of rogue cell tumorous condition. But of course, all that's running on some form of intelligence. Now, I get how Dr. Lee describes extremely well the switches that happen at that chemical level. But from my background, there is an intelligence behind that. Now, it isn't cognitive like we think, which Dr. Lee's pointed out in the book, but there is intelligence. And we can define that in all manner of ways as to how it manifests on the step down process into the physical world. But I hope I didn't get too far off field, but I, to answer your question, Lee, <laughs> that's what happened. And that's the dynamics of what happens in my thinking processes. Well, that, that's incredible to hear the, the philosophical groundwork of, you know, where you and others in the natural healing arena where you're trained to, to think and process in that way. And, and, and as you say, they're bringing them together into the physicality, you know, which is uh, more measurable, perhaps, you know, quantifiable with uh, experiments and, you know, chemical assays and so forth that matters. So um, uh, as we transfer or translate that physical, the, uh, the uh, philosophical now, could you, you explain what redox signaling is? When we talk about redox signaling molecules, um, help us understand that from your point of view. Well, look, I, I kind of keep that at its, what I would call it, it's, it's more simpler level of explanation because, I mean, what I said before, as practitioners, we kind of have some extra insights, but at the same time, 
We need to be able to get that message across to an audience. Um, and, and the reality is, um, as more is unravelling with, I believe, last figure I heard from David last week was up to 40,000 research papers now on PubMed, that all things need to be signalled. So in a physical uh, amazing universe like the, the human body with up to, everyone's got different ideas of numbers, but up to 100 trillion cells, 20 billion dying and being replaced every day, there's an awful lot of communication going on extraordinary amounts of communication. So when I'm actually teaching this uh, to people, I say, look, you're all familiar with signaling molecules in the human body. You've all heard of neurotransmitters and you can name a couple, serotonin, dopamine, whatever, people go, oh, yeah, yeah. And then you say, and, and we're all aware of hormones, profound messengers within the human body that affect uh, many, many cells. I mean, often even in the hormone world, they'll talk about, you know, one hormone targeting certain cells. And the more I taught anatomy and physiology right up to, uh, and pathophysiology up to 2017, the more it was becoming evident to me that the endocrine glandular system wasn't just glands anymore. Every organ in the human body produces hormones, including your stomach, your small intestine. I mean, hormones are produced by pretty much every cell in the human body. So they're profound signaling messengers affecting the functioning of cells that people can relate to. So I then just tear down. I don't get lost in the leukotrienes and the cytokines and prostaglandins because that, again, becomes slightly more technical. You need the medical science undergraduate degree stuff. So I kind of back off slightly there. But now I come back in at the most deepest, smallest, profoundest, in my opinion, uh, signaling molecules that have ever been discovered, which of course are redox signaling molecules, which are all well enumerated in your book. And I then say, as I teach, uh, the two most underpinning uh, manifestations or causes of all disease, disease is just six cells. That's all diseases are, they're six cells. You know, people get very hung up on their disease name, like it's part of their personality. I mean, that you, you got to remember, guys, God didn't invent diseases, okay? They're just manifestations of sick cells. Uh, we all, and historically, many before us, gave the names of diseases to these abnormal physiological structural manifestations of diseased cellular function. Uh, so, you know, when you get to that deepest level, of nano-sized signaling molecules that affect the DNA. And we've got the gene study to prove that. And there's going to be a lot more where that came from, of course, because we do have what affects the genes. We already know that. Then previously, it was all about the DNA, the genes on the chromosomes and the genome project. It was all going to be, we're going to cure the world with the genome project. Well, that didn't happen. Uh, and nor would it because the DNA is not actually the be all and end all, as profound as the genes are. Um, but when you now know to manage inflammation and oxidative damage, which are the two primary causes of all disease uh, processes. Now, I think this needs to be made clear. A lot of people sort of get hung up on, oh, is it inflammation or is it oxidative damage? And we know, oh, the panel knows, um, but we're teaching others that almost every disease process will include some degrees of inflammation and or some degrees of oxidative damage. And most involve both. Um, so if we've now got, if that process of inflammation and oxidative damage is managed by antioxidants, which it is, and managed by regulating the inflammatory response. And I remind everyone inflammation has a place. It's second line of defense, non-specific resistance in terms of healing processes. So it is a necessary response for healing, but it is an out of control response that results in disease processes and particularly chronic ones that can cause extreme damage. So if we now know, as we already do, that the signaling molecules in the right balance and the right numbers are necessary for the 
epigenetic expression of genes to balance those processes, and life is all balanced, everything is balanced, then you do have the holy grail. And the redox signaling molecules, we know again from studies that have been done, I mean, that amazing increase in production of the master antioxidants of the human body, glutathione, superoxide, dismutase, catalase, that is profound because they are what will counter oxidation. Now, remember, we said balance. You know, we all, again, Dr. Lee and, and, and Maureen, we relate to this. You know, the oxidants got a pretty bad rap in the past because they were just considered exhaust bad. And yet, you know, the most powerful weapons of the immune system to kill off virus, including killing off, uh, triggering, you know, cell death when rogue cells get out of control, are oxidants. <laughs> So, I mean, oxidants are really extremely important in their place, but they're extraordinarily damaging out of their place. And redox signaling molecules regulate that process and they regulate the inflammatory process. So if you can get those processes to the extent that they're necessary, but not beyond that to create abnormal physiology and structure and ongoing disease processes, you have the most profoundest discovery in human history as far as a product that will allow the body to heal itself. And that's what we have. Maureen, can you give real quick or Lee the, uh, I know you stated it up front, but the medical disclaimer. Sure. You know, but I, I have to say, Dr. Ray, that, that was, was brilliant. That was brilliant. Oh, yeah, I mean, was... I've, I've never heard a given like that. I'll be giving it that way from now on. <laughs> that was really impressive. Okay. I love, love it. And um, I do have a question after Maureen gives us the okay. I'm what like, we have to say because yeah. we want this to stay the way it is. I feel like Vanna White here, but <laughs> again, even though there's a lot of medical professionals here, and the science is so compelling that it really draws medical practitioners in. Um, because of what we're learning, but it is not a medical product. It is not meant to treat, diagnose, cure anything. What we're doing is empowering your body. We're filling up a deficit. We're reestablishing a balance in the body so that the body can work the way it was intended to do. And the body has an innate ability to heal itself. So that's our disclaimer. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, we meet with a lot of people. We talk with a lot of people every day as we did today. And a lot of people go, it just sounds too good to be true. If it's true, why don't more people know about it? But I don't know if Lee or, or Dr. Ray, if you want to answer this, but if it's as big as this, then why don't the medical community know about it? And the biggest one is why isn't it an FDA monitored, approved technology and why did it have to slip down uh, into the category of a dietary supplement oh i love that question i absolutely love those questions i'm going to jump in first lee if i may please guys you've got to realize you know one of the things i learned from my yoga philosophy studies way back when is you know we all like to think we're free and we all like to think that we're free in our thinking processes. Well, that's quite a journey. And in fact, many of us are totally brainwashed. You know, you, you grow up, you're born into a certain time period, you grow up in that time period, you're absolutely socialized and, uh, and, and taught by the conventions and belief systems that you grow up with. And you're equally being programmed. I mean, the entire fundamental mechanistic model of allopathic medicine is in contrast and contradiction to the natural therapy model. Uh, the natural therapy model is the one that teaches in vitalistic medicine that there is an intelligence, that the cells have some degree of intelligence. Now, we won't debate the subtleties of that, but that's where the inner doctor comes from. It's the body that heals itself when the body gets what it needs. So other interventions can most certainly help to manage extremely difficult circumstances. And when I say other interventions, I'm obviously talking drugs. Um, uh, and in some cases, natural healing products as well. So there's no doubt that there is a place for, for drug medications. 
But that whole model of disease processes and we need to intervene to control them because we're better than Mother Nature, that's where they lose me uh, and lost me a long time ago because it's actually flawed. The model is flawed. And, in fact, to see a redox proves it, <laughs> uh, quite frankly. So, you know, it, it doesn't fit into a paradigm, Jim, if we're not part of that paradigm. <laughs> so the reality is uh, such a profound native molecule to the human body that's now clearly discovered and, and evidenced and rolling out and I see you have it. Uh, the dilemma, uh, as I see it, that Virtus uh, faced uh, and others participated in in the family, including Dr. Gary Samuelson, is how do we get this most extraordinary product that allows the body to heal itself to as many people as possible, as quickly as possible to change the world? Well, if you have that dilemma and you take on that decision-making process and you come to the wisest decisions, you would make exactly the same ones. Uh, you would register it as a supplement, which is far easier. You would not spend the countless hundreds of millions of dollars to have it registered as a pharmacological drug product. And if you did, by the very nature of drugs, you will only have a number of means by which it would be recommended for because that does, that's the mechanistic drug model. Even if you have such a most profound product that allows the body to heal itself allows the body to heal itself from anything. You can't have such a drug. It doesn't fit into the paradigm. So if you try to make, you know, the round hip peg go in a square hole, you're going to have issues or vice versa. Uh, so it just, to any far thinking intelligent person, you wouldn't want to go that way. And so Virtus didn't go that way. And then when it comes down to how do you share the product with the world where we have such restrictions, again, laws based on power and money that determine what you're allowed to say and not allowed to say. There is no freedom of speech, of course. We've evidenced that far more clearly through the COVID time, but I'm talking this stuff quite apart from anything to do with COVID, you know, you know, what you can and can't say about natural native healing products is nothing short of extraordinary. So I agree with Dr. Lee, shift the paradigm. Don't, don't try to make it fit in their paradigm. We don't want to be part of the allopathic medical paradigm. We don't want to be part of the pharmacological medicine drug paradigm. We are the vitalistic natural healing medicine paradigm classically. And if you don't like to use the word medicine, because that's another word that has been captured, <laughs> then we'll change it, won't we, Dr. Luke? So, and then to get the power of the product explained to people, you can't put this on a, on a shelf with salt water, bioagulitic certified to contain redox signaling molecules and expect people to pay $50 a bottle for it. It's just not going to happen. Uh, people need to share their result stories. They need to share a little bit more about what they know about it. And one-on-one, -on -one we can sometimes say just a little bit more. And then that's what will take it around the world and has to 33 countries and just getting started. And that will take it to absolutely explode and realise the dream, reaching as many people as possible around the world and helping those people to suffer far, far less, and in many, many cases experience miracles. I was told uh, in that first week before I actually joined by Dan Doyle, who made a phone call to me, Ambassador Triple Diamond, and he said to me, uh, he was the sponsor of uh, Loreen, and he said to me, look, if you get involved with this product, here comes one of the isms, Lee. He said, stand by for miracles. Now, I took that with a grain of salt. Uh, I wasn't convinced at that stage. I was still doubtful. But now I say it all the time in my own Zoom calls with people I'm dealing with daily. I say, stand by for miracles because they're going to happen. 
and they do happen and they happen around us every day. And I consider myself extraordinarily blessed and privileged to be one that finally paid attention. Um, and uh, the rest is history. Here I am three years later and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> awesome. we're, we're glad that you're not. Yeah. And, you know, it, what's so neat about this is that it's what we've heard called the missing link, that it's so much more important than really anything else. I remember in nutrition class, you know, we had to learn about magnesium, vitamin C, all these things. And there's a lot that you have to teach somebody in that realm. And then you have to compete with all these other products that are out there. And here we have something, as our pharmacist on our team has said, the most the fundamental thing in the human body, and we have it where you drink it or you rub it and you can start seeing changes that the body does, as you say, the, the inner healing. And so that's what's so neat. And again, people make it a little bit more complicated than it is because we're talking two modalities. We're backed by a science.com has all the backing of the, the material. As you mentioned, Google Scholar has all these thousands of abstracts. And then four years ago, we've got the gene study. And that should be enough for people if they'd really study how important those pathways are. Um, now you've been to, in this three years. So what are your thoughts about our gene study and how you use that or share it? I mean, it, to me, it's quite, quite amazing to have it. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I just think, again, it, what you'll find is people always trying to make us fit into the medical paradigm. That, that's what you're going to find is the constant issue. And we just have to keep shifting the paradigm and saying, look, this is part of natural healing, vitalistic medicine. This is what is regulating the genes. And the gene study proved that. Well, the genes are pretty deep you know, in the nucleus of the cells, they, they're pretty profound. But when you get something very subtle that affects the genetic pathways like the gene study proved, well, it's just confirmation that we do have what I'm referring to as the Holy Grail. We, we do and has, we now have it discovered. <clears throat> the, the, the problem perceptually by society is they tend to keep wanting to look for disease studies where double blind crossover trials on disease processes and the use of a sea of redox guys you need to realize this cannot be done you can't do it because it would get pulled off the market it would have to go the pharmaceutical route and you wouldn't have it and you wouldn't be able to get it except through medical prescription there's no way the company can do double blind crossover trials on disease processes. That's trying to make it fit in the old model. We don't need to go there. Get on it. You will soon find out for yourself. And, and as we teach three to four months, please, not two to three days or a week or two. One of the other things that I teach people is it's not about working or not working. If you've got something that is so universally profound, of course it's working. It's whether you're working. Uh, I can be blunt sometimes. So I actually say the, pro the issue is not the product, it's you. Right. And it's about dosage and it's about time. It's all about dosage and time. And as we know from peak healthy puberty, the downhill production in redox signaling molecule and the imbalances begin at 1% per annum, 10% per decade. So at 65, I would be making 50% less of trillions and trillions of redox signaling molecules. We now know this is the major reason for aging and disease processes. I mean, that's what we know. Uh, but science knows that. It's not just a lack of antioxidants anymore. It's a lack of signaling mm -hmm. molecules that produce the antioxidants. So it's, it's not that complicated. Um, so, you know, it, it's really don't try to make this fit that paradigm. Uh, and what you're right, um, Anne, when you say when you get the energetics right of the cell, the efficiencies of everything else improve. So your efficiencies of the absorption of nutrition from the gut, 
the efficiencies of delivery of those nutrients to the cells. The efficiencies of the cells using the nutrition and the nutrients is better and greater, which is why people need less supplements. Now, I still don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I don't say, look, you know, you can still be iron deficient or magnesium deficient. In fact, I had a case in London some months ago where she'd been on a seer and was quite happy, but her hair was falling out. And this is the conversation that I had with her. Have you had a blood test? Yes. One year ago, I said, what did that show? She said, I was iron deficient anemia. I said, so what did you do? And she said, well, the doctor said, don't worry about it. <clears throat> so I said, well, you're still iron deficient. It's probably got worse. And that's kind of why your hair's falling out. So she got on some extra iron and well and behold, the hair stopped falling out. And that was the end of that. Now, obviously she was already on a seer read of, so that's my point. You still need your nutrients and we still yeah. uh, need to be aware of that. And we should still be drinking clean water, um, breathing clean air where possible and eating organic food if we can to stay away from the whole litany of, of, of chemicals which are adverse to human physiology, really. Uh, so I still recommend that. But, and this comes to your point, Anne, this is such a profound product that I actually, and remember, I've got a, a lot of baggage nutritionally and uh, 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 in terms of my dietary background and studies uh, and supplemental training. I mean, I studied those things for 45 years, <clears throat> but I don't go there. Uh, uh, to me, it's all about the most universal product that's ever been discovered that profoundly helps every cell to heal itself, and that's a sea of redox. I only go there when something presents itself to me. I mean, if I see someone there twitching at the eyelid while I'm talking to them, I might recommend some magnesium. <laughs> yeah. but, but it's got to hit me in the face. Because, because I get such profound results that I've never had before uh, using a seer. So my focus is all about getting the timing right. In other words, not me getting it right, getting their head in the right place. You've got to give this three to four months. And even when I say that, I say, but some of your conditions will be reversing for the next up to years. Uh, True. Because you know, I have the same issue in practice. We all do, you know. I, funnily enough, guys, even in my practice life with herbal, nutritional and dietary uh, interventions, guess what I used to routinely say to people long before redox? Don't judge this in a month. I used to say, do not judge this in a month. You need at least three. Funny mm -hmm. about that. The sea has landed in exactly the same place. Now... That three months, though, for everyone's interest, is for you to notice your body is changing. You're feeling better. You're sleeping better. You're healing. It's not cure of everything you have. People are extraordinarily impatient when it comes to uh, When we recommend something that is, is powerfully healing, they're extraordinarily impatient. They kind of want the results yesterday. And if they don't get them in a week, well, this stuff's not working. Uh, no you're not working. You've got to get the product for long enough and enough of it because as we know, Maureen, as we get older, we're more deficient, so you need a bit more. And there's no test. There's no medical test that tells you how deficient you are. And that's why we just take more until we get the magic because it's just getting enough for the body and time to be able to reverse what damage has been done. And that is a process. So thank you. I talk too much. Rest of them freeze. Okay. Oh, there she is. Okay. Are we back? Did back. you guys freeze? I thought y'all froze. Did I freeze? Oh, sorry. Well, little... oh, we all did. Um, um, go hey, ahead, Maureen. Ask... Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dr. Ray, a couple, a couple of things. Um, this has been so awesome. I love what yeah. you said about that. You know, when I was still practicing, and of course, I was part of the allopathic using a lot of medications. That's how I got on a journey looking for things and, and actually studied acupuncture. So a little bit of the, the Eastern. And it's interesting when you were talking earlier about, um, you know, energy turning into matter. I remember they said that they've actually got studies now with the different meridians that they can actually show those as a pathway, kind of like the neurovascular bundle. They kind of run along with that. And so there's ions that are flowing in there. Don't know if there are redox molecules, but it's really an interesting thought. Hmm. The other thing 
is I used to teach my patients pain and disease is like an onion. You're continuously peeling off a layer, getting to something that's deeper. And I find that that's true with the redox as well, that the longer you're on it, the more things that it seems to affect. And so even though, you know, we say, give it, give it 90 to 120 days. I always say, let the cells that are going to turn over in your body have the opportunity to turn over with a full complement of redox. But the truth is, is that you're going to see, you may experience, it's always working something in that three to four months, but some of these things we're finding now might take years to reverse. So people really, yeah. You know, why would you want to go off of it when, when continuous healing is happening? But I also, if you wouldn't mind, I I know you're all about, this is our Holy Grail, but what about our nutritional products? You know, for me, I didn't have a deep education in nutrition, but I'm very, very impressed by them. I'd love to hear your opinion of them as well. Absolutely. There's two, um, there's there's two comments I will make. Firstly, it's interesting, Maureen, and I'm sure Dr. Lee will agree with this. the, the, The analogy of an onion is actually extremely good. And I use it too. Uh, and in the in natural healing philosophy, there's what they call retracing. And that is that you retrace out of conditions you've developed the way you went in. So, uh, uh, and, and of course, in a lot of instances, people are suffering from chronic diseases, not short-term acute, but chronic. And when you're reversing out of those conditions, when the body gets what it needs, it's literally, as you said, it's like peeling off layers of an onion. And that's why you can have a what we call a healing crisis. It's now become more commonly known as a detox. And what I don't like is a Herxheimer imer reaction because that came from drug medications killing off the syphilis bacilli, for goodness sake. Mm-hmm. So, you know, let's get back to the natural model. It's a healing crisis. It's your body, what it does when it gets more energy and it gets what it needs it will initiate detoxification, healing crisis processes to get you to that better place. Now, these are side effects, but they're the best side effects you could ever have. You know, mm-hmm. side effects of the game are all brainwashed to bad because they're the negative side effects of drugs. That's the wrong model again. <laughs> okay. Get, you know, the natural healers on the call all know this process of natural healing, peeling off the layers of the onion and reversing out of the disease condition that you've developed for the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, that's what happens with the layers of the onion. Now, in regard, and, and that means you can have detoxification stages. You might have a slight one in the first week or you may not be aware of it. And then you might have one three months later or one year later, peeling off the layers of the onion. Um, but you're always on the improve when you're on the right journey, when you're getting what the body needs and the steer is what you need. What uh, Dr. Maureen's also asked me about is the VIA range of nutritional products. Now, like I said, we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. When I said before that I just focus initially on redox, let me tell you what I'm doing. I take the supplements. I take supplements every day. Uh, I've always taken, uh, I'm just shifting presently across to uh, the VIA range because it's hard to get here. It's not available in in Thailand. In fact, the drink isn't either. I bring it from Malaysia. Mm. Um, And so, but I did pick up the entire VIA range when I was in the US just a a month back. Um, So I'm actually shifting across to them now from supplements that I've had from my clinic. Uh, I'm still working through some of those. So the key point that Maureen's asking me here is, you know, do we need to supplement with super nutritional sources uh, of products like in the source via range? Absolutely we do. Uh, Mm -hmm. Because we all know, I mean, I've taught this my whole life. I lectured for 16 years. I mean, you know, there's no question at all that the nutrient density of the foods that we consume has collapsed. And not only is the nutrient density collapsed, the, uh, the, the chemicals that we're being exposed to, adverse chemicals that were not designed to be in the human body have exploded. I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of them. Uh, so, and when you get those kind of toxins introduced, well, the body actually needs more nutrition to deal with them. It needs more redox too. So 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we all need nutritional supplements. As, as a range of, at this stage, key focused fundamental nutritional products, the four VIA are profound. That's why they were developed first. You know, so below the genome, we've got now the redox zone. A lot of people have fallen in love with that name that you've perpetrated, Dr. Lee. Um, so I now have to teach it because my followers insist because they got it from your book <laughs> and your presentation. So, but, but of course, the, 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 the four key ones, if you were ever going to develop great uh, supplemental nutritional products to work with redox, would obviously be a superfood source of nutrients like source. It would obviously be a profoundly effective pro-prebiotic formula, biome. Uh, the, the omega-3 fatty acids have had probably the most greatest amount of scientific study almost of any nutrient in the last 30, 40 years. Uh, so you certainly would want to be supplementing with one of those, and we have that in the omega. Um, and I take them all. Uh, and, and I have for years, even before the VIA range were ever made known to me. I'm just transitioning across now because... And, and, and another final point I might make on that, Maureen, is... You know, I've had the certain products in my clinic for 30 years that, that were there right up until I left. Um, but remember, even nutritional knowledge evolves. And there's no question one of the fundamental arguments always back in natural healing was, you know, uh, if nature's got its act together, and it seems to, uh, then it's going to package nutrients synergistically that work with each other in those superfood sources. And there was always an argument, even in natural healing, as to how much we should be synthesizing vitamin B and giving it as a separate supplement and not following a more natural source. That's kind of been a counter argument that's existed in the natural healing field for years. Well, of course, fortunately, these being latter day generational super nutritional products, they've been developed recently. So they're at the forefront of the latest knowledge and information on synergism and the best way to get nutrients that work more efficiently. So they're fantastic. Does that help? <laughs> That's my endorsement of VIA. <laughs> yeah, and, and, yeah, and the redox is what makes everything you do for good health work better. And the beauty of our, our four is that they synergetically work with redox and so it gives us a complete cellular health company. And that's why it's so great to share it because, as you said, I mean, we have our own story. We know thousands that are seeing results. And, you know, I can't say enough about our nutritionals. And I loved hearing Maureen when she shared at Nashville of how awesome, especially LifeMax is. Sure. And what makes our line so different than everything else that's out there. It's all about absorption and our products do that. I know. Isn't it awesome? So Maureen, were you going to say something else? Uh, no, you know, if I could throw another plug in for the via line, you know, I love the, the length that they've gone to, to source these things, not just source, which, you know, they went to what the waters of Iceland to get pristine mm-hmm. algae. But when you think about with the Omega products, you know, people are pretty used to taking Omegas, you know, they're they're pretty common, but they get, they take wild Alaskan fish that's processed immediately. So why is that important? Because they're in the wild, they're eating nutrient dense foods, the algaes and all, not like the farm raised fish, who knows what they're getting. So it's important where you get your supplements from too. And I, I love the fact that this company has really worked hard to have high quality, very beneficial nutrients for us. So, yeah. exactly. Oils are very vulnerable to rancidity and, and oxidative mm-hmm. yeah. very quickly. So that snap freezing in the perfectly natural environment, you, you can't get better than that. That's right. You know, someone brought up a, a question about, is there a secondary market? Uh, I'm going to put on my brokerage app. Um, the majority of people, this is a category creator. And I don't know if Lee, if you want to touch on that real quick, but we're bringing something to the market that has never been there before. And my first question to Virtus Norton, when we saw him six years ago, uh, as a privately held company, 
will you ever go public? Uh, and I don't know if that rings a bell with anybody, but for me, it does. Because when a company goes public and it trades on the exchanges, the, the paradigm, there is a paradigm shift within the company. They go from caring about what the technology is, they only care about one thing, and that's called earnings. How much money are you making? But the fact that we are bringing a category creator, which I, I don't know when the last time a category creator has hit the market with only one company. This has never happened before. I don't think that someone has brought something this significant to the market. And it's been on the open market for 12 years, and nobody has reverse engineered this. This is that once in a forever opportunity, because when, and by the way, we do have Tyler Norton uh, will be with us in two weeks to maybe go over some of this. But I don't think people understand a category creator. And then you have a bell curve of how a, a, a category, how a new product is brought to the market. There are, we're in 33 countries. There are so few people that know anything about this. We are, we're what's called innovators. We are the gatekeepers. We are the, um, it's our baby. But there's very few people that are going to be willing to look at this because it's not very well known. And that's exactly why we do this program. Right, Maureen? Lee? Yeah. Are we early right? adopters? Well, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the early adapters come next. And then, but you don't want to be a laggard. No. Don't be a laggard. That's the last end of the bell curve. Here. But to have, to be an innovator, you the market penetration is two and a half percent. We are so far away from, we are still in the, we're a 12 year old company guys, but we're just, we're not even a blip on the radar screen yet. Mm. And the only way people are going to hear about this, because we don't have any middle market men, that's us, right? Maureen, right? Lee and, and Ray. The only way people are going to hear about this is when we talk, share, and invite to these kind of programs, what Alan Noble does, what other leaders all across the world do by educating people. So, Lee, you've done a phenomenal service to the world uh, with your book, but how would you briefly, we've got three minutes, category creator, what is that? Can you kind of give us a quick summary of that? Yeah, the, the category creator is an important distinction here. Uh, number one, we have we have the science, the technology that enabled us to be a category creator, uh, protected the trade secrets, the patents, and so forth, which is why this is uh, so uniquely um, protected. But the category is what uh, Dr. Ray said a minute ago: it's the redoxome. We have the genome and the metabolome, and you know these are science words that just describe the strata in which this lives. This is, the, this is the influence upon the genetics, the genome. This is the epigenome, the redoxome. And so this is an important, um, you talked about your, your degrees of, of market penetration. You know, we go through formulation be, before we accelerate. And the, and the whole point is the, um, the uniqueness of this is because this is this is protected, and we finally have a stabilized approach to the redox signaling molecule. We've been making redox molecules for two centuries. Making them isn't the, isn't the deal. It's stabilizing them. It's making them so that they can be available and that they're bioavailable in their bioidentical form. That's what makes this a category creator. Cool. And guys, exactly. Fastest, fastest hour in ASEA. You can't wait for next week. And, and next week, I've, I invited uh, Lisa Simmons. She's a nurse practitioner. She's part of Pepper Black's team. We uh, heard her a little bit on Terry's call, and I thought she would be great for Friday night. So she's next Friday so with. We've got a panel. We've yep. got Jerry White. Yep. We've got Dr. Dick Walker, yep. and then again, Lisa Simmons. And yep. then the week after, uh, we have got Tyler Norton. And so, guys, this is why we do this, is to help educate people so people can understand what we have and why, that it's a gift, it's a divine gift. Stick around for the Aussies. We just saw Stevie He's, up. He He's very <laughs> punctual. And so, guys, we thank you. We love and adore you all. 
Um, come back and see us next week. Get back to the person that invited you to this call and get on this technology now. Don't wait. So thank you guys. God bless. Stay on it long. Thank you, Dr. Ray. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Love you guys. Thanks, Lee. We love y'all. Bye-bye. See you next time.